Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to fracture stuff using geometry nodes, which I've done before, but this time I've done it a lot better. You can see we have these complex looking fragments and you can do this on any kind of mesh. So if this sounds interesting to you, keep watching. Uh, this is actually a beginner tutorial, even though it's a complex result. So uh, in geometry nodes, what you're going to do is you are going to either pick a surface that you want to fracture, or I'm just going to use a default object and get rid of it and say that we want to fracture a sphere. So again, you can either import in the geometry you want or use one of the primitives here. I'm going to make this a high resolution sphere. And what we want to do is we want to take this and break it into fragments. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to distribute some points on the faces and each fragment is going to be the set of points that is the closest to a single uh, one of these points, which I'll make that more clear in a second. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize the amount of points so we, we don't have too many. And here's our set of points. What I want to do again is to separate this mesh into fragments that are closest to each of its respective points. Uh, to do that, we need to know uh, what point is it close to. So we're going to use geometry proximity and set this to points. Uh, each of each point on the UV sphere is then going to say what is its closest uh, point on the distribute points on faces, and we can actually look at the position of that. Okay, so now the secret sauce is we're going to use a kind of a node I haven't used really before, uh, which is face set boundaries, which what it does is it lets us select the boundary loops of these fragments, and that's what's going to let us scale these up and down. Okay, so for our original mesh, and I know it's a bit confusing, but it all makes sense in a second. For our original mesh, we want to split the edges along these boundaries, so along uh, where the face sets are changing. So you kind of can plug this in directly, and then do this, and then do that, uh, which is going to give us our sphere. Uh, but you're going to notice when we scale elements, what we'd hope for is that these pieces are already fragmented, but they're not. This is because face set boundaries has a index, uh, has an integer input, and we're kind of putting in a vector here. Uh, so what I would recommend is we're going to look at the position of each of these points that it's taking in. We're going to look at its x coordinate, and we can do a rounding to the nearest integer. And to make sure that there's more points, I'm going to add a math node, because right now it's going from like 0 to 1 and rounding. I'm going to multiply this by like 15 or something. Okay. Now when we scale elements, you can see it's actually broken up into fragments. So again, uh, what have we done here? We've taken a mesh, we've distributed a bunch of points. I then said, look at what uh, point is each uh, point on the sphere closest to, which uh, dot in some sense. And then we're going to make these boundaries based on these face sets where we split edges. And then we're going to scale these elements just like that. Now, this is a great way to actually procedurally control, you know, the amount of, uh, you know, the amount of uh, fragments we have, or we can quickly change the seed and get different segmentations. And we can also make this higher resolution by upping our uh, count, our resolution count. But there is one thing that this method does that others will not, and that is letting us use the source position input. So here's a cool trick. What we can do is we can mix this. So right now we're just using the base uh, position. I'm gonna mix this position with a noise texture. And this is something the cell fracture does not do. So I'm gonna connect this here. I'm gonna set this to linear light. And you can see now uh, as we control, as we increase this amount of linear light, we're actually getting uh, more complex looking fragments. And you can control uh, the detail of that and the scale. So before, after, you can get more complicated looking fragments. So check that out. To actually give these some like dimension, uh, what I would recommend is we are going to extrude the mesh, not on individual, but just as is. And now we have fragments with actual thic thickness. So you can actually uh, segment a sphere, or uh, at this point you can use any base mesh so what we could have done is instead of the sphere, we could have done something like, I guess there isn't a torus, but we could have used a cube. Connect that in here. Make sure it has a lot of resolution to play with. And you can see it's taken our cube and segmented it. 
It's a bit choppy right now because of all these points. I'm going to make it maybe 150 by 150 by 150. And you can see it's taken our cube and segmented it into pieces. And this can be done with an arbitrary mesh. Uh, just to show you that's the case, let's do this with our Suzanne. So here we have Suzanne. And then in here, we want to import in the object, object info, Suzanne, import this in, and you can see Suzanne's fragmented, uh, although it's better when we have more uh, mesh to deal with. So I'm just going to subdivide it a few times. So let's see what this looks like. So originally we have Suzanne. And then we have the fragmentation of Suzanne with complex fragments, which is something that, again, cell fracture and other methods have not been able to do traditionally. Uh, so what you can do is I believe we can set this to one. We can apply this, and then we should be able to separate by loose parts, ideally. There we go. And now we have separate parts of our uh, mesh just like that, and you can run a, a physics simulation on that. So uh, hopefully, let me undo that, by the way. Uh, hopefully you found that tutorial useful. It's just a quick trick that I found, and uh, yeah, that's it.